the guinea pig, the llama, and the horse. All of these animals have been domesticated at some point in history in Latin America. In this documentary, we will talk about not only the history of these animals, but also their influence and their use in Latin America through the ages. The guinea pig. It's neither a pig, nor is it from Guinea. So what is this strange rodent's history? The guinea pig is originally from South America. Today, guinea pigs are widely domesticated as pets, livestock, and laboratory animals from all over the world. But where there are domesticated animals, there first had to be a wild animal. In South America, there are 20 species of wild animals that look like guinea pigs. They even make the same sounds as them. But the wild ones that we see today all have one or two colors, are slimmer, have a different structure of digestive organs, and many other differences. So what has happened to the guinea pig over time? Domestication is what happened. When one thinks about it, the dog is very different from the wolf. So why wouldn't the guinea pig be any different? As early as 4000 BCE, the Incas started breeding guinea pigs. Unfortunately for the guinea pigs, the Incas did not domesticate them as pets, so this did not mean that they could eat all that they wanted to. They were bred to be eaten, and even to use as sacrificial offerings to the gods. Unlike today, where the guinea pig is bred for its fur length and color, the Incan guinea pig were bred for the flavor of their meat. When the Spanish took over the Incas, they were immediately captivated by these small furry creatures and brought them back to Spain, where people took them as luxury pets. Because the Spaniards would pit stop on an island they believed to be New Guinea, where similar looking rodents called cavies were sold, people may have thought that that's where they were from. Another theory for the name is that when the cavies, and probably the guinea pigs too, were sold in England, they would cost one guinea, which was very expensive back then. As for the pig part of the name, because it does not come from the meat flavor, which is said to be taste like rabbit, it probably comes from the pig-like squeals and grunts that these tiny mammals make. The llama, pronounced llama in Spanish, is a member of the camel family and is also very closely related to the alpaca. They have thick wool and, despite being one of the oldest domesticated animals in the world, have very good survival instincts. Both of these allow them to live in one of the toughest climates on Earth, the Andes Mountains. These pack animals were first domesticated by the Incas. The Incas were first used them for their wool to make bags, clothes, and ponchos like these. They were also used for milk. But one of the most important uses of the llama was the fact that it can be used as a pack animal, meaning that bags and objects can be placed on its back. On the treacherous mountain paths of the Andes, the llama's sure footing, which is just as good as a mountain goat's, was a wondrous way of traveling with merchandise. Thanks to the llama, the Incas were able to travel and settle in places that couldn't have been reached with just people. The llama, in fact, was so useful to the Incas that it is the second most depicted form in Incan art, second only to their sun god. Their dependence on the llama and its cousin, the alpaca, is the same as that of the North American Plain Indians to the bison. The difference between the two groups is that the llama was able to be domesticated and therefore served more functions than the wild bison. Not only that, but by being domesticated, the Incans were able to selectively breed the animals and choose traits to their liking. This led the llama's ancestor to produce a sturdier animal that could carry heavy loads, the llama, and a smaller version of the llama, bred for its very fine wool, the alpaca. Today, llamas and alpaca are still used not only for their wool and as pack animals for mountaineers, but also as great pets. These lovable animals will come when called, but be careful not to upset them or they may spit in your face. When conquistadors came to the Americas, there were no horses to be found. The horses that we know today is not native to Latin America. It was introduced to the Americas when Europeans came over and the horses would get loose. That's how we got the wild mustangs of the Great Plains, as well as all of the other horses in North and South America. But the, horses do, but the horse does have its origins in South America. The Hyracotherium, or Euhippus, was a short, 
five-toed animal no bigger than 20 pounds that lived in the dense jungles of South America's rainforest. As time passed, this little creature evolved to move out of the jungles and go towards the vast plains of North America. In doing so, they adapted to their new field, losing the extra toes to become one hoof, growing bigger and stronger, and adapting to the grazing lifestyle of what we now consider the modern horse. But why weren't there any horses in South or North America if the first horses were here? The theory is that horses migrated over the Bering Strait to Asia and eventually to Europe and Africa. All of the horses left in the Americas, including a breed of North American zebras, died and became extinct. So, in coming to the Americas, the horse became one of the first creatures to literally go all the way around the world. But the horse's history in the Americas doesn't stop there. Latin America is the birthplace of what we now call Western riding. Okay. Though the Spanish already knew how to ride horses, ranching in Latin America modified their style. Reining, riding with the reins in only one hand, was born so that the cowboys, or the vaqueros and charro, could use a lariat, also known as the lasso, with the other hand. The western saddle, with its horn for tying up cattle, was also invented. The quarter horse was bred. It was, a st it was stouter and had greater endurance for the long treks across the plains. Thus, the cowboy was born, shaping not only Latin America, but our very own North America as well.